Hello, everyone. My name is Kevin Navratel, and I am a political science professor and the Democracy Commitment Coordinator at Marin Valley. I am doing my very first podcast today in an attempt to have interviews with people around campus to try to highlight some of the civic work that they do um, and to try to promote our Democracy Commitment program. Moraine Valley Community College is part of a consortium of community colleges that are committed to democracy and trying to promote civic engagement and civic literacy on their campuses. So I happen to have a position where I have campus events and um, work with faculty to try to promote civic literacy into their curriculum. Um, I've had several events over the course of the six years that I've been doing this that have primarily focused on national issues, um, elections, um, and a few times we've had um, elected officials. I remember having Kelly Burke and uh, Senator Bill Cunningham on campus. Um, but for the most part, a lot of the programming has been more national in focus. Um, and in my American government class, we talk about federalism and, and how there's, you know, county and local offices in addition to state and federal offices. So really, most of the government that the average citizen interacts with is at the local level. So this year, I was trying to make more of a focus to bring um, attention to, to uh, more local offices. And one of the more local offices that we have is trustee positions. And um, earlier this fall, I had the opportunity to meet trustee uh, Jacqueline O'Day of trustee of Marin Valley Community College. And today I'm very grateful to be joined by another one of Marin Valley's board of trustees, trustee Tr Tracy Sullivan. And I'm also going to be talking about uh, to trustee uh, Patricia Murphy and Tiffany Robinson as well uh, in this, in this podcast um, at a future date. So, um, Currently, uh, Trustee Sullivan serves as the Associate Vice President in, of Procurement and Business Services at Governor State, um, and um, she's also a Moraine Valley trustee. So I wanted to start out, uh, tr uh, Trustee Sullivan, just tell us a little bit about what made you first interested in public service, go government, politics? How did you get started? Well, first, thank you for including me. I appreciate it, Kevin. Um, for me, my career was all in higher education. The last 30 years working at Marine Valley and then going out to Governor State University, where I actually retired just last month. Oh, congratulations. So, thank you. Just a few months ago, um, after a fabulous career, I found myself wanting to give back. And since public service was so important to me in the way that my siblings and I were raised, I wanted to see where could I make a difference. And so through my career working in higher education, I spent a lot of time down in Springfield working on legislative issues and trying to help solve some problems and improve processes. And I thought, where better than to share my knowledge with the college? And so I ran for the board a year ago and was fortunate to be selected. Thank you to anyone that voted. Um, and people should always get out to vote, side note. Um, but I'm thrilled to be back at Moraine Valley serving in this different capacity. Politics always has a negative connotation, I think. So I like to stress that you're a public servant, that you're engaged with your community and you want to give back. And that's really why I wanted to join the Marine Valley Board to see what I can do to continue the great opportunities that we have here in the Southwest suburbs. Awesome. Thank you so much. And, and tell me a little bit about that, um, the positive aspects of, you know, uh, being a trustee and, and what you do and, and um, you know, um, kind of the day of the life of, a, of, of an, in an average month or in an average semester, like what a trustee does. Well, it's only been a year. So in the last year, though, one of the blessings that I found is getting engaged with the students and the faculty at Moraine through different events and working with the foundation to make sure that everyone knows what opportunities exist here at Moraine Valley, not academic only, but also everything that's arts and that wonderful Fit Rec Center and other places and give everyone in the community a reason to come to campus, a reason to engage with Moraine, whether they're a business owner and they want their staff to take courses here or their families and they're not sure where their high school students or them themselves may want to come back to school, that everyone has an opportunity and everyone is welcome. So as a trustee, we guide policy we hired the president. We're thrilled that Dr. Pam Haney is the new president of Marine, almost completing her first year this summer. Um, so that was an exciting time when I first came on the board to jump right into the presidential search with the other teams and select the next president. 
and that will become a strategic plan and a direction. And I'm just thrilled to see where Dr. Haney takes the campus with the administration and faculty. Awesome. Yeah, that's been an exciting year. It's been a busy year. How was that? Uh, what was the campaign process like for those who've, you know, was it your first campaign? Uh, for those who have never, you know, most people don't run for office. So can you tell us a little bit about what that was like? Sure. And I, you're right. I never ran for office before. My mom served on the Orland Park Library for 25 years, um, years ago, but I never ran for office. Many of my friends are elected officials. So when I told them I thought I could add some value at Moraine, they encouraged me to put my name out there. So we passed the petitions. And it always amazes me how people don't know how much work is involved in running for office. You know, passing the petitions, getting your name out there, making sure that people know why you want to give back to the school or come back to the school in my case. Um, but it was a lot of door knocking and meeting people. We have such a great district. It's very diverse. So I wanted to make sure that I was at events all over the district as much as I could so I could hear from people and see what their perceptions were on Marine, to see what things they loved about the place or things they wish they could change, and really just be a sounding board to see what they thought. So I had my feet on the ground a lot running for office. Now, a year ago, there were 11 people that passed petitions for two vacancies. I think that's more than typical. Uh, I came in number two. Um, with our current trustee, Eileen Walsh, coming in number one. So she and I were elected and sworn in a year ago. The process was exhausting, and I think she would tell you the same thing, but it was well worth it. Because if you want to do it, you want to do it for the right reasons, and you want to represent the entire district and make sure people know you as a person they could approach. And that's why I reached out to so many different people. Wow. Well, congratulations again. And um, with that in mind, I, I, I wanted to kind of connect um, traditionally on the first day of, of, of class, I, I do a survey with my students. And one of the questions on that is asking them if they've ever voted. And, you know, we do have um, many students who are of traditional college age. So this is one of the reasons why I think um, the, the number of people who have voted is, is so low. But in my fall class, um, I had 14 students complete the survey and only one of them had voted. And that's not atypical from, for a survey of, of, of my of my classes of low voter turnout. So, you know, you put yourself out there, you ran, you knocked on doors, you know, it, it takes a lot of work. Um, but can you make a case of like, just for students of, of why it's important for them to be more involved in voting um, and getting involved in, in their political system and, and potentially running for, for an office like you did one day? Absolutely. And thank you for that question. I mean, we exhausted ourselves standing outside the polling places, talking to people and making sure that everyone knew who we were and why we wanted to run. It's so important when we elect leaders, whether it's municipal, at the college level, regional, statewide, national, to pick the people who you trust and you want to represent you. And if you don't cast a vote, then someone else could get elected. In the recent election, we saw some of the numbers so low with low voter turnout that there were single digit differences in voting in different precincts. And that could really make a difference as to who is representing you. So if people don't get out to vote, you never know who may make making choices for you, your community, and everybody representing you. And that's really unfortunate. So the more that we could educate people, I always go back to Schoolhouse Rock. Do you remember Schoolhouse Rock? I do Rock? remember. I'm not sure that your students would, but it was a fun, lighthearted way to remind people the importance of the process, how a bill becomes a law. And I said, wouldn't it be fun if somebody updated that to make sure that folks young and older know how important it is to get out to vote, to make a difference, to have your voice heard, to be in the community. I saw all over social media just a few weeks ago when we had an election and people said, if you don't vote, you don't have an opinion. Well, you can say that, but everyone has an opinion. Okay. But you elect people who you believe will do the best job who will represent you, who will serve the community, and when they're faced with tough decisions, they'll make the right decisions that represents everyone in the community. And that's what I want to try and do here at Marine is make sure that anyone from the entire district could approach me at any time and tell me what they think. I'm one board member out of seven. I'm blessed to have a fabulous board of trustees and a, an incredible student trustee here. Um, and getting to know our student trustee, I'm not sure if you've met um, Dimitri, Dimitri Sianis, he is just a, a breath of fresh air. So spending time with them and learning more about the college and who we are has been a blessing to me. If students didn't vote, I might not have been elected. Right. And I want to give my best to Moraine Valley, but if I didn't have that opportunity because people didn't vote, 
someone else would have been in the in the chair instead of me. So I'm grateful that people got out to vote, and I hope that everyone encourages their friends, their family. It was fun seeing small groups of, I would call them teenagers, probably 20-somethings, coming into group together, four or five guys. They looked like they came off a basketball court or something, and they were coming in to cast their votes, or families coming in to vote together. Whoever your peer group is that encourages you to do that or shares information so you feel like you need to elect this person, him or her, and make sure that this referendum gets passed or not, to get out there to vote makes a difference. It'll affect your community. It'll affect safety. It'll affect taxes. It'll affect every place that you love. And so if you don't have an opinion about that, that's a sad state, I think. So I hope that more people are encouraged by yourself, other faculty members, to know why it's important to get out to vote, not just because of a candidate, but because it's their community where someday our students could be raising their families here. And the seeds that are planted today are foundations for things that will be futures tomorrow. Wow, that's really well said. I, I was thinking um, in part w with kind of that disparity of national elections with presidential election, like we have this upcoming uh, November, that voter turnout's typically the highest in, in presidential election years, um, and then followed by the, the midterm elections. But then <laughs> trailing at the very end is, is the type of election that you referred to uh, of these local elections that are typically in uh, odd numbered years in the spring. And, and, and like you said, single digit turnout, but yet the conundrum is that these positions are so consequential to our everyday lives, including um, the quality of our of our college. Right. And the most recent election, we elected judges. That could be important to any one of us that at some point in our history could have to be before a judge. Right. And you want good people. And if you're not informed and you don't vote, that's a challenge. Some folks didn't want to vote in a primary. They wait until the fall. I hope that everyone comes out to vote. That's how you cast your opinion. And then consensus, majority democracy rules. Yeah, excellent point. Uh, you mentioned a little bit about how there's you're one of seven on the board. So there's a process of democracy of campaigning. There's a process of democracy with the actual election. But then democracy internally, uh, how does that work when you're d deciding on issues and you're working together with your six other colleagues and trying to deliberate and, you know, persuading ideas. Can you just walk us through a little bit like how that works in the actual kind of um, group decision making that is made? Sure. Again, I've only been doing this for a year, but based on that experience, um, we have two new trustees, myself and trustee Walsh, um, and then we had two appointed trustees. So we did a lot of training. We had the opportunity to be trained in parliamentary procedures to make sure we know the do's and the don'ts and the way communication is handled in the Open Meetings Act and making sure that we're always doing right by the college because that's paramount, right? Most important to make sure that we're doing everything legally and appropriately. Um, and so to make sure that we have discussions about any issue as they come up, um, the chair will always call to make sure if we have any concerns that she can address them. I, speaking as myself, um, have great working relationship with President Haney that if there is a question or a concern or I see something in the Chronicle of Higher Ed and I send her a note, she's great to respond to it to make sure that the trustees have all the information they need. So when you get that agenda packet and you have items that you have to vote on, you have a confidence that you know what decision you're making, yes or no, and why, or did you get all your questions answered? And so for us, vetting everything through the chair, which is Chair um, Beth McElroy -Kirk Kirkwood, at Marine Valley, and then at the president's level to make sure we have all the information we need. And we don't always agree. Everything isn't always unanimous, and that's how it should be. We have the discussion and the dialogue in a professional manner, and then the vote comes and the decisions are made. So it's, it's um, refreshing to hear that. And, um, you know, I think it's also refreshing and just kind of putting this all together, how any citizen, you know, can, if they're motivated enough, put themselves out there, get the petitions, put themselves on the ballot. And like you mentioned, there's there's training available. Some of these positions, like a trustee position to kind of help people um, who might be new to this to, to be able to run. So it's a really strong case for people to, to get involved, not just vote, but potentially run for offices like your mom did, like you've done. Well, thank you. And I'm, the trustees that we have on the board now, um, some of them long-term, Trustee Joe Murphy has been at Marine for a very long time, 25 plus years. Um, and He's been on the board and has a perspective that those of us that have only been here for a year, it would be different, and that's great. Trustee Tiffany Robinson, who you mentioned earlier, is the first minority-serving trustee at Marine Valley, 
And she is a dynamic, energetic powerhouse of a person and brings perspective because she was a student here. So we all bring our gifts and our skills with us. And we share that information with each other so that we can make the best decision, knowing all the different perspectives of what might be a community member, what might be a faculty member, a student or staff, um, or someone in the community just like us that has a reason to come to Marine Valley. Right. Um, One of the uh, topics uh, I cover in Congress for my American government class next week, we talk about how elected officials represent us. And there's a, a couple in our textbook, they have these theories of representation and one of which is a trustee. Um, so in this case, it's a, a, your, your literal trustee. But in this uh, conceptual definition of a trustee, it's that, you know, that person's an expert. They know best. Uh, it's, it's, it's appropriate for them to use their judgment, their skills, their experience in how to vote or decide on issues before them. Whereas there's more, another a counterpoint to that is a delegate representative where, you know, you're really just taking the place of the citizens who elected you in that you should can, you know, kind of listen to public opinion and, and, and the input of, of the, of the voters who got you into office. Do you ever think of it that way? Like, how do you, when you make your decisions and, and, and how you, um, represent your constituents, is it more of a trustee? Is it more of a delegate where you're just taking their spot? Um, how do you, how do you view that? So I would see it as a combination. So as a trustee here at Moraine Valley, I see myself as a representative of everyone who lives in our district, right? Some of them might reach out or you meet them at the Jewel as they're grocery shopping and they'll tell you great things about an adjunct faculty they had at the best speech teacher ever. Or they'll, they'll share with you a concern that they have or they have a question that you need to redirect to the appropriate person. So constituents are definitely who we represent. We bring together our skill sets that we have in our background As a trustee, I want to make sure that those constituents, faculty, staff, and administration trust each of us to lead the place in a direction where Moraine Valley will continue to thrive going forward. There are changes that happened during the COVID um, situation of a few years ago where Moraine had to get together with the board at the time. I was not on the board at the time, but made decisions on what had to happen quickly. Because of the skill set they had, they made those decisions going forward with the facilities master plan and what the next dreams of the place are, what Dr. Haney's hopes and dreams and her strategic plan are. As trustees, we are trusted to help guide policy and the president to do what's best for all the taxpayers and all the constituents in our district. And that's students, faculty, staff, administration, and every single taxpayer. So it's a big umbrella. It really is. Or at least that's how I see it. Exactly. Um, You know, I should have started with this earlier, but you've you've had a lot of experience uh, at Moraine. Um, not only as a trustee, you've been a faculty member. You worked in the purchasing department. Uh, can you talk a little bit about those experiences, or maybe something you know that really stands out to you? Favorite part of Moraine? So the, my favorite part of Moraine, by far, is the people. People at Moraine are family, and people say that, um, but we mean it here. And I knew when I was here working in purchasing. Um, I was here for about three years, and then I stayed teaching as adjunct faculty in the business college for over 20 years at night um, while I was out at Governor State as the procurement director and vice president out there. The people at Marine really make the difference. They care about each other, they care about the place, and they care about their students at a different level than I've seen at a lot of places. Um, and so it was sad to leave Marine, but leaving Marine gave me an opportunity working at Governor State to get more involved in government to be at the Capitol and down in Springfield and writing legislation and presenting testimony and making changes as the fixer to some of the problems that we had in public institutions of higher education. And so having um, grown from Marine but continue to teach here, it was natural for me to want to come back to the place that I love. These are my two favorite campuses. As I was walking in here earlier, I saw Governor State out at the table talking to students for the dual degree program. Governor State and Marine Valley have always been great partners. So for me to share any knowledge that I have with the college of the things that we have done as an administration at Governor State, if it's applicable at this college, um, from buildings to problem solving, people always say they want me in their corner. I just want to be there as a resource. I want to be there to listen, to figure out what the problems are, if there are problems, and help guide the place so it continues to thrive. I have no knowledge of existing problems. I didn't come in with any agenda, but I came back to Marine because I love the place and I love the people. Retirees get together for breakfast just because they want to see what's up. How are things? What are you doing? How's your family? And you don't see that at other places. 
So it's a blessing to have the faculty, staff, and students engaged with each other, and I hope that continues for a long time. I do as well. Um, so you've been in higher ed, you're very, have a lot of experience in higher education between Governor State and Moraine. Um, what do you think are some of the biggest challenges facing higher education um, in community colleges in particular? Well, the challenge is um, almost always financial at some level. Um, there never seems to be enough money to do all the things that we dream we want to do on behalf of our students um, and to seek grants and revenue sources to help supplement any monies to make sure that uh, faculty and staff are paid appropriately, competitively, so we can retain and recruit the best people to be that Moraine Valley family is critical. It's true on every higher education campus. It's also true of students to make sure that students are educated properly, that feel appreciated, so they're retained and they stay here and they take courses and they tell their friends and the family why they chose to come here so that more people have a reason to come here and stay here, take classes, join the Fit Rec Center, do something in the art lab, do something over in the trades area, or join the fire academy. There's something for everybody here. Um, I just want people to continue to come back to Moraine. So the challenges will always, in my opinion, be trying to figure out how and where to spend the money to the best benefit of the students and the taxpayers, no matter how much money you have, because everyone will have an idea of how that $1 should be spent. Excellent. Thank you. Um, in terms of the future of American politics, is, is there anything that um, makes you optimistic about the future or anything that makes you kind of concerned or pessimistic? Well, we have a fabulous country, right? Um, I, one of my passions is always talking about first responders, police and fire, um, supporting our veterans, making sure that our military have the support that they need. We have to trust the leaders that we put in place to make those decisions. We can all be the Saturday morning quarterback or Sunday morning quarterback and sit back and question what they do and how they do it. But if you're not in that chair, you don't know what you don't know. And so I hope and pray that the leadership of our country continues to keep America safe, to make us strong, and to make sure that everyone knows that they are welcome and supported by the people that represent them. And so as you're educating our students, do they know who they should call in Washington, D.C. if they have a problem? You can't just call 1-800, that I'm aware of anyway, the White House, and get a number. But do they know who their Congress people are, who their representatives are, or how to appropriately approach elected officials? And that's one of the things, you know, people take to social media and they'll say what they say. But have they taken a step to say, here's my concern, and this is why, and this is what I would rather, and send that information in an appropriate manner so people can learn and are they open to that discussion? I think that's the one piece that concerns me is that many times people aren't willing to listen and to hear each other. They're there to judge each other, reply to each other, or strategically argue. I hope people listen and are respectful because that's so important in a community. We have that here on our campus, I believe, but I'm not sure that we have that on the national level. Well, it's really well said. I uh, I was thinking of a lot of different directions to take that with a follow-up. And um, it seems like a lot of opinion polls show we have a decline in trust or confidence in government and in, in our institutions. And I think there's just like a, a negative association that many citizens have with government. But in a democracy, we are the government. And, and, and we are, you know, everyday people who can run for office just like you did. And you know, that level of respect, uh, that, that culture of civility, of working together, even with people who you might have dis, uh, differences with. Um, do you think that there's some, like part of the problem is the, the citizens and that it's more of either our unrealistic expectations or our lack of civility, our lack of knowledge, that it isn't so much that we somehow got um, just bad leadership throughout the decades. It's more that citizens have changed in what we expect and what we demand or how we get along with each other. Well, that's a great question. Um, you know, I think everything has to start with respect, right? Everyone has to be willing to listen to each other and they need to be allowed to complete their sentences without being interrupted and to be heard. And I'm not sure that every community feels that they're able to do that, right? Um, on a national level, I hope that people know, and I was surprised some voters didn't realize, you don't always have to vote for everybody on a slate. 
you don't always have to vote for every candidate that's part of your preferred party. You make choices based on the individuals that are going to represent you too, and you pick who is the best person. And that's where I think we need to get to is learning more about the people and how they are going to lead our country. Who are they? What choices might they make um, in our communities, in our state? What do they believe in? What challenges have they already overcome? What experience do they have? It's just like applying for a job. Who do you want to trust the most in case of trouble that they're going to solve that problem for you? That's the concern. Solve the problem, communicate effectively, and always do it with respect. I think that's part of what we're missing on a lot of levels when it comes to politics. And I think that's some of the negative connotation that comes along with it because people don't always work that way. Yeah, well said. Do you have a favorite politician or is there some elected official that you feel that you try to model yourself after, uh, you know, uh, principles that to, to kind of guide you by that they may, that they, they may have had? Well, first, let me say I have many friends who are elected officials. So all of you, yes, that's you <laughs> I'm talking about. But specifically, um, I want to go back to the first person in politics that I was ever exposed to personally. Um, or familiar with, I should say. Um, and that was a local mayor, Mayor Frederick T. Owens from Orland Park, when I was in grade school. Mayor Owens lived on our street. Um, I know his daughters. And we were wearing T-shirts, vote Owens, and walking and knocking on doors and talking about him because of the person that he was, not the office he wanted to hold. We wanted him to help grow our community and be our mayor because he's someone we knew, someone we trusted, somebody that we wanted to put in that position of leadership. Um, and so he was the first politician that I ever knew. And the village in Orland Park has named the, the complex or the village um, hall after him. So Fred Owens was that first politician. He went to Springfield. He was a teacher. He was a good person. And I'd like to check that box with everybody who I think is a good politician. First and foremost, they need to be a good person. Whatever their background is, whatever their beliefs are, be a good person, communicate effectively, and make sure you're going to be willing to represent everyone and listen to everyone, even when you don't agree with them. And that's how we build our communities, I think. I, I agree. I, I think it's also interesting that the early experiences you've had between your mother running for office, um, you know, having a, a mayor on oh your street. Oh gosh, I should have said mom was my favorite politician. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, that was the gotcha question. Sorry, mom. <laughs> you know, but I've, I've been involved in state government now for 30 years, and I've worked with many in the General Assembly um, and a lot of local folks to try and solve problems. And it really has been a blessing in my career to be able to bring my subject matter forward to be heard to work on legislation and to have representatives and senators from the Southland help me get those things done that now have a ripple effect in the procurement code for higher education, which is different than the community colleges, but the public universities and the state agencies now have to follow this law that has been tweaked because of some of the suggestions, some of the testimony that I provided over the last several years. So I'm proud of that, and engaging like that is what more of us need to do. Find a way. It doesn't have to be through an elected position, but find a way to make a difference, to have an impact on your community and make it better when it finishes than when you started. Well, well said. Um, you know, I've, I've been able to ask you lots of questions today. Um, we're we're kind of getting at our 30 minute time limit. Um, is there one thing that citizens or people who listen to this podcast should know about trustee Tracy Sullivan that we haven't gotten to? Well, I just want to make sure that everyone knows, as a trustee at Marine Valley, I love the place. I'm not afraid of difficult conversations. Um, if they come up, they haven't yet, that I'm aware of anyway. Um, but I love the place, and I want to see it prosper. And I want people to think outside the box and tell me, what can Marine look like in 10 years? I don't know. What does tech think we need? What does healthcare think we need? What do labor unions think that we need? What do citizens want? What do our students need? What's different than when I worked here 30 years ago? The place has grown phenomenally, and I take absolutely no credit for that. The administration, the staff has done that. But looking forward, what's the next generation? And I'm just proud to serve on the Board of Trustees to hear what everyone internally and externally says to grow Moraine Valley and all the programs that we offer so that we support everyone has a reason to come here. I just think it's a fabulous place, and I, I think you do too. I do. How can we get your students more engaged with civic engagement and democracy and getting them to want to vote? Do you have any suggestions for me? 
Wow, that is the $50 million question. Well, you've no. been asking me the question, yeah. so I just threw you one. Yeah, um, I think, you know, making, trying, one of the things I try to, to strive for is trying to show the relevancy to their lives. Sometimes I feel that when I was a student, it's, it's, it's easy for government to feel abstract. It's just external than you. Um, to show how decisions that are being made, policies impact um, our everyday lives, um, from the taxes we pay to the quality of our schools and so on. And, and one of the things that I think is important is trying to show the, the, the comparisons of maybe other countries, comparing different states, how you know similar um, political systems have very different policies and different results and comparing and contrasting where we might stand in education rankings or things like that to try to show that, you know, elections have consequences and, you know, policy uh, can be handled in different ways and, and can lead to different outcomes. Um, but it's, um, I, th I think it's a struggle and um, I, I don't know that that's the only way of going about it, but it's, it's definitely one of the, one of the ways that I find um, um, helpful for me to try to connect to my students of why they should get more involved. Well, I'm grateful that you're leading our students and teaching them that. In closing, I just want to make a comment. I encourage everyone listening to this podcast to make sure that you're familiar with all the great opportunities here at Marine Valley Community College on our campus, um, courses and otherwise. Check out marinevalley.edu if you're not familiar with it and learn more about this fabulous place that we're talking about today. Um, make sure you get out to vote. Find a reason to engage locally whether you're interested in fire science, the library, or something, start small and grow from there because you have skills that we desperately need in our communities that are local, statewide, and then national, not only when we have elections, but in between the elections as well to continue to grow what's important to you and make sure that your elected officials are aware of that. So that would be my request. I echo, I echo that too. Well said. And thank you so much, Trustee uh, Sullivan. I really appreciate not only your service to the college, but also for taking the time to, to do this podcast today and um, you know, share your expertise. Thank you. I hope you have a great day. Good luck, everyone. All right. Thank you.